We are live. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Vent Events. Danny Pellegrino will be joining us shortly. I cannot wait. We're doing a little tequila. Uh, he's going to be joining us shortly, and he has so much to complain about today. I am so excited. He is, he kind of is embodying what a Vent Event is today. He's having Wi-Fi issues. He's having power issues. He's, ha he's just having so many issues, and issues are, Stacey, hey, Issues are kind of why I get out of bed in the morning. If I don't have something to complain about, you know, and I'm sure you guys also, I need a bagel. Uh, you, you know me. Like, if you if you don't have issues, what are you complaining about? Hey, everybody, I don't know if you've heard. Teddy is officially out. We're complaining. Cheers to Teddy Mellencamp not being on our TV any longer. Can I have any of that? Can I have a little, like, cheers to Teddy being gone from our lives? I mean, whew, I, I hope she just does something new. I hope she paints. I feel like she could paint by numbers a lot better than she could uh, be a reality TV star. Because it takes a little, I would say it takes some, um, just being remotely interesting to be a proper reality star. And she just doesn't have that. Debbie, you're happy that, are we all happy Teddy's gone? I mean, yeah, cheers. I was gonna make an everything iconic tonic for Danny Pellegrino, who'll be joining us soon. But I decided with Teddy gone, I'm doing a tequila Teddy. And it's just, because it's all in, it's just tequila and lime juice. So I feel like it's, approved by her and that psychotic diet that she is pushing all of us to do. Hey Tim, how you doing? I love a Boston. I mean, Boston is so much fun. So this is for her. Danny is going to be joining soon. He's the host, obviously, of everything iconic. He's so iconic. Uh, less than 500 calories. I mean, I eat 500 calories in my sleep. Do you know what I mean? That's why I couldn't do her diet. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, how did I gain two pounds? Like, that's just, that's where me and Teddy differ. We differ from a lot of things just because I feel like if I was on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I'm not saying that I should be her replacement. I'm just saying that I need jalapeno lime juice. Ooh. See, this is where I don't cook. I don't do any of that. I don't know how to... And that's cooking to me. Putting jalapeno lime juice in a tequila, in like a cup of tequila, is my type of culinary cooking. We're waiting for Danny Pellegrino to be joining us so soon. I can't wait. You guys probably obviously know him. If you are if you remotely know who Teddy Mellencamp is, you know who Danny Pellegrino is. He is... He has more personality than her. He's so funny. He's the host of Everything Iconic, uh, which is, spoiler alert, iconic. He also, uh, let me cook. Girl, if you want to cook for me, I am so down for that. I, I, I'm looking for anybody to cook for me, to do anything for me. I see Danny joined. I cannot wait to hear all about his insane. He's living a vent event. He's heaven sent from LA. Does he have power? I don't know. Do anything with Wi-Fi? Danny uh, Hello. Hi, Danny. How, How are, you? are you? I've had a day. You've I've had, had a day. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I emailed your producer earlier because um, for the entire morning and early afternoon, our internet went out. Um, but, but we had power. Our internet just went out and I have spotty cell phone re reception. So I was like really worried about this. Anyway, then around two o'clock, the uh, internet went back on and I was like, okay, we're good. And then 30 minutes later, the power went out for two hours. <laughs> just been like who did, a day. So who did you piss off at Spectrum? Like, you have enemies, I guess. <laughs> I swear to God, Danny. Also, this has never happened where we've had outages like this. Of course, every once in a while, like, maybe your power goes out or something. But it was like for the internet to go out for six hours and then the power to go out for two hours. It was like, what is happening in my life? It's truly the four horsemen of the millennial apocalypse. But I'm... So happy you were able to make it through. I mean, and, and don't you sort of feel like I know this is um, everyone's got way worse things going on. So I don't mean to complain too much about that. But um, everything that happens, I feel like we get closer and closer to end times a little bit where I'm like, is are things just ending now? Like what's happening? Well, I feel like you probably felt this too. When I saw yesterday that Jackson and Brittany announced they're pregnant, I was like, I need a bomb shelter. I was like, it's truly right. end of days. I don't even know how to prepare about anything it's all going down but are you you so are you um because also i have to say you're one of the nicest people i've ever like interacted with. Uh, thank, and, you. thank you and i feel like that's why i'm excited to bring out your vent side so your complaining <laughs> side which is so important <laughs> right we all need to vent we all need to vent so i know i feel like your vent of the week is it your uh wi-fi and technology issues or has something it, else bothered you? no that's like the main thing that's bothered me to be honest with you like that of course there's plenty to vent about these days that have just been frustrating. I mean, I that's the thing that I was planning on venting about, though. Like, I've been most upset about um, just technology. 
lately. I, technology in general has just been really stressing me out. And I think during this time of the pandemic, we're all expected to know how to do everything like Zoom and, and all of that stuff. And it's like, I'm learning, but like, it's hard and there's always problems. I, I don't even know how to update my, like get into my cloud. Like that's how behind the times I am. I, and oh now, oh, Danny, you know? I, I just got an email today that said my Gmail was completely out of storage, like a hundred percent out of storage. And I'm like, what does that mean? Like why? That's, and like, it's, isn't what the internet mean? fake? Where is it being, where, where do I have to move out of? Like, I, do I have to get a storage unit for my old selfies when I fit into pants? Like, I'm really confused with that. <laughs> I don't get it. I was like searching my Gmail for like any email that said Amazon. And then I hit delete and it still said 100% full. And I'm like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Like, I'm not going to pay. They want me to pay $10 for storage. I mean, come on. I'm not doing I that. I truly think it's just someone taking your $10 and is like, fooled you, bitch. Like, nothing will work out. I do have to say, and people have been commenting, I love the candle in the back. What is its scent? What's its energy? I need everything. It's heirloom pumpkin. Um, it's, a home, it's a home goods. So, um, oh no, I'm sorry. This is a Marshalls. Sticker's okay. still on. Please don't lie to me any oh. other times, just so you know. Yeah. I hate no, I'll, I'll try not to. <laughs> it's not a, th it's very big, but it's not a three wick. It's a two wick. Oh, okay. But it's like sort of, it's spicy. It's spicier than a normal like fall candle. It's like got more of a, it, a stronger cinnamon and some spice. It's I good. love that you're kind of, you're, I like how you're giving me like autumnal poppers energy. There. You're just like, <laughs> spice, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Between a Marshalls and a Home Goods, which one are you, which one is your allegiance to? Home Goods, for sure, 100%. I, I worship them and I, I haven't been to one since March, but like I, I feel 100% loyal. The one time they sent me like a, uh, what they call the gather package like I got a whole box of stuff with like with gather in it so like <laughs> it was like <laughs> that sounds terrifying <laughs> they sent me I had like a gather pillow I should go find it but I have a gather pillow like a gather tea towel like it was like a whole package of gather merch um <laughs> that they sent me and so after that I was like I will love them forever like I stand them that's so true I would love because I love like gather it sounds both like fall but also kind of like horror movie like I feel like a marshal to do like a midsummer package and you're like I love this like flower crown like why am I being murdered what's happening <laughs> right but, and they they all have their they all have their different uh, benefits like I, I am a maxinista certified maxinista I do love my marshals uh, I love a Kohl's cash but um home goods is my number one I know I miss being able to like just like walk the aisles because of the pandemic I haven't really been like doing a lot of my like aisle touching and that's kind of how I get through the day. So I've just been switching to tequila, which kind of helps. Right. And I do have to let you know, I was going to have an Everything Iconic Tonic cocktail for you, but I switched because I just saw the official news that Teddy's gone. So I'm having a tequila Teddy. Cheers to that. I don't have my cocktail with me, but cheers to that. So is that, can I, what is your, what was your first thought when you watched her video? Um, you know, I, I actually thought her video, I thought it was good how she dressed it in a way that was like upfront and honest. Like to me, that was, one of the best ways to address it. And I've never seen a housewife say anything like that in, in terms of like just saying, yeah, they decided they didn't want to renew my contract or that that was open and honest. But otherwise I was like, good riddance. You know I know, what I mean? good riddance. Because I'm like, I've never seen a housewife this honest, but I've also seen, never seen Teddy that animated. I'm like, babe, where was that? Where, where was that like five hour energy you chugged before that Instagram live or any of your scenes in the past three years? Right, right. It, she had a weird, you know, I was talking to a friend about this, like she did such a great job of like, doing what I think the producers wanted her to do. And what I what I say is like, or what I mean by that is like, in scenes, particularly in Rome, when she brought up the Denise stuff, I felt like a producer was off camera and was like, I need you need to talk about that. And she just did it. But she still did it in a boring way that was <laughs> yet still inappropriate, like, I don't know if that makes any sense. No, it's exactly, it's exactly like it's, she was the beginning of the let me entertain you strip from Gypsy, where it was like, do the dance. And she's like, let me. When it's kind of like, no, get to the end, show the, like, take the glove off, give us more. I know. No. I won't be missing her, but will you be missing Dorinda? I will. I know that's not popular at all, but I will. And I want to ask, because I want to ask you, because you're obviously not only a Bravo expert, but I consider you like a, an icon that loves icons. So, I have a little segment that I want to do. Do you, what would be your medley for medley? What is like a ballad that you would dedicate to Dorinda medley leaving if you have one? Oh, yeah. Um, she, she made it nice and she's not well, bitch. I don't know. It's like the, 
to me, the the beauty of Dorinda was the dichotomy of like, I do think she has a really good heart. And, I, and it, of course, we didn't see much of it this season, but I do think she's a genuinely good person behind all the rage stuff that we saw this season. <laughs> I also hope, you know, someone in the comments said that their son's girlfriend's dad is the vice president of Home Goods. And like, if you have those coupon, girl, keep me posted. I love that. I, you send us a coupon. Yeah, babe, send, me, send me half of a coupon. I just like to frame things. Uh, I want to ask you too, because I want to touch a little bit on fall, because you're a big fan of fall, right? Yes. But is there any part of fall, like what is your least favorite part? Or what's a part that you see people do? You're like, why? Oh, my least favorite part, I, this is sort of specific to where I live. I'm in California and I'm from Ohio and I miss the seasons of Ohio and the Midwest. And so I do hate that I can't always be cozy here in LA. Like right oh, now I'm in a t-shirt and I had my robe. I was like going to put it on, but I was so, I, I would be so sweaty because it's hot here. <laughs> Your um, power was out so you have no easy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like I literally, like we just got the air back on, so... <laughs> Um, but that's what I hate the most is I just feel like I want to be cozy and I can't be cozy. Oh, uh, I feel that very hard. But let, I don't know if it's good or bad for you, but I feel like in a few years, nowhere will have seasons. So like <laughs> you kind of will just be more used to it. And do you yeah. like, and in LA, cause I know you guys do this for like near December time. What are your thoughts on like when you guys fake it for like a little fake snow, a little fake pumpkin patch? Are you like, don't even pretend or does it make you feel happy? Well, Danny, I love the fake pumpkin patch here because like you can go and see both big time celebrities. Like I one time saw Christina Aguilera like at the pumpkin patch. <laughs> Write that memoir also. Christina Aguilera at the pumpkin patch. <laughs> <laughs> but then you, not only do you see like these A-list stars picking up pumpkins, but then you also can see like just really embarrassing like influencers doing like full photo shoots. And it's hysterical to watch because people will try to get the sexiest or like, you know, the best shot for their, for their thing in the pumpkin patch in a hundred degree weather, but they're also trying to look cozy. So they'll be in like scarves and it's just, oh. it's really funny. So I, I love the pumpkin patch. It's like one of my favorite things to do here. I, I never end up buying a pumpkin from them because it's like $45 for a pumpkin, which is fucking ridiculous. And I mean, like we don't have bionic money. We can't be buying these pumpkins like <laughs> Christina Tan Crawl. <laughs> Bionic Money, though. By the way, that's an underrated album. That's neither here nor there, but underrated. Oh, uh, that's the one with Woohoo, right? With Nicki Minaj. I would just, I just became born again. Like that is my song. That's the energy. I also love the. <laughs> there, there's a song where she she marries herself in one of the songs on that album. She's she, literally like, there's an interlude where she's like, "Do you take yourself to be your lawfully wedded bitch?" She says that's the lyric, and. Um, she, yeah, she marries herself in the song. <laughs> I, I, there's nothing I love more than someone who's like done it all. So they just go full on like, I'm a, like just throwing anything to the walls and not only to the walls, but they release it. They're like, this is perfect. This is Christina. You'll get it or you won't. Most of us won't get it though. Right. It was ahead and, of its time, Danny. Yeah. And speaking of not getting it, um, have you watched any of, because I know you also love daytime TV. Have you watched any of the Drew Barrymore show? Oh yeah, I watched the premiere of it. Mm -hmm. It's wild. It's like a wild thing. First of all, the premiere, she had a reunion of the Charlie's Angels, but then it was revealed at the end of the interview that like uh, Cameron wasn't even there, which was weird. That's, that's what I don't, like it really reminds me, like it's vaudeville Dadaism. Like I don't understand <laughs> what she's going with. Like I don't know who her daytime mentor was because she's just like splatting out. I felt bamboozled when they all of a sudden like showed a hologram of Cameron Diaz. I was like, you guys bamboozled me into thinking like you were all together and you weren't. She was in a different state. And, fully and that's what I don't get about the show either. Half the, half the like people are in studio, half are on Zoom. Like it, it's so confusing to me. And then also she brings up Cameron Diaz every episode, which I mean, I get, but also I'm like, you guys aren't that close if she didn't fly in. That's my... Right. Well, to be fair, I bring up Kathy Lee Gifford every one of my episodes of my podcast, so <laughs> I understand in a weird way. <laughs> um, I love Drew. I love Drew, though. I think like Drew Barrymore has like such a, a fun presence and stuff. Oh. It's just, but in general, I think it's hard for any A lister, and she's like arguably A list. I don't think they're interested in talking to other people, and so we're all just pretending that they should have talk shows when they shouldn't. That's the funny thing, because all of her interviews end up turning into her being like, okay, well, like, she's so used to being interviewed that it's impossible for her to kind of, like, balance that out. And 
but I feel like no one can say no to Drew because we all love her and she's so sweet. So. Right, she's so sweet. She's so bubbly. But I also watched the interview she did with Paris Hilton, and oh, yeah. it was a, it, it was a similar sort of thing of like um, her wanting to relate to Paris herself and throughout her own experiences. But it ends up just coming across as like not being interested in the person you're interviewing. If that makes sense. That's a, it's it sums me up because like remember when we could go like to group dinners? It reminds me of when someone's telling a story and you have that person there that's just waiting to like chime in with how the story relates to their own story, that's every interview I feel like she's right. going to do. And, and kind of know, someone just... Oh, oh what, you, I was going to say, uh, somebody said Kelly Clarkson. And I think Kelly Clarkson actually does a good job of like, um, she seems like someone who's genuinely interested in talking to people. So I think she's sort of the exception to a lot of it. Um, but there are times where I watch Kelly Clarkson and, and I worship the ground she walks on. So this is no shade. But there are times where I'm like, you know, maybe you could somebody who is a better interview. I, I don't even I hate to even talk poorly about Kelly because I love her. But oh, I rest easily. She's not watching. So it's fine. Um, Kelly, could you imagine? I'm like, Kelly Clarkson just said, wow, that hurt my feelings. OK, wait, <laughs> uh, Danny, I don't. I, I don't know if you know this, but I once did a shot with Kelly Clarkson at TomTom, Tom, which was like a weird, like <laughs> a weird sort night. of. Uh, Have a good night. Yeah, it was like a weird Walk sort of life, home. life moment where I was like, "This is the weirdest thing." Um, I don't even know how to explain it, but I, I will say, like, we took a shot as it, there was like a group of us, and then across the restaurant was Selena Gomez, and then so like we. <laughs> it was just like what? the most bizarre night. So I did a shot with Kelly Clarkson, and then ended up uh, meeting Selena Gomez and talking about Vanderpump Rules with her. It was like a weird life night where I look back and I'm like, was that a dream or did that really happen? But yes, Kelly was so great and sweet. Wow, I, I had no clue Selena was like a surfer girl. Like she, I didn't know she was a star head. She, yeah, she, she, Selena Gomez is like a Vanderpump Rules fan. Oh, get yeah. her on the show, okay. Yeah. And one last note, do you watch, or I don't know if you watch Dance with the Stars, but people are asking your thoughts on Tyra. You know, I, I worship Tyra. She's insane, but I sadly have not watched her on Dancing with the Stars yet. Although I'm sure she's as insane as ever. That's, I mean, that is kind of just her, uh, her MO, if you will. Yeah. Um, I feel bad. I feel bad for Tyra because she was supposed to open up like a theme park for models. Did you remember this? <laughs> right before the pandemic started, she was supposed to open up Model Land. What? And the, and she was like doing press. She was all over the place doing press for this place called Model Land. And then the pandemic happened. And so her model theme park couldn't even open. Can I say, I feel like that's for the best. What would mo Model Land would probably just be like, you're like, you can't go out of this ride because like you're not a mo Like, I feel like it will only end poorly and make me cry if I went. Was it going to be in LA? I think it, I don't remember. I think so. I think so. But it was a very strange thing. And I remember when she was doing press for it, I was thinking like, who's gonna go to this? Because there was like no real, it didn't make any sense. Not, it was all unhinged, make very little sense, but she was advertising it. And then, you know, in some ways, it's one of the few good things maybe to come out of this pandemic is that model land couldn't open. And I say that lovingly with no, all due. That is like, she dodged every bullet with that. Like the Harvard Business Certificate grad <laughs> opening model land should not happen. That should not compute. Um, speaking of uh, Tom Tom and Selena Gomez and shots, I want to also do a little because now that all so many Vanderpump Rules cast members are pregnant, I'm putting you a little bit on the spot. I want to do sir shower. So if you were going to their baby showers, what would you give each of these couples? The first one I want to give you is uh, Jackson Britt. Can I give them all a pink slip and so they don't have to see them on Vanderpump Rules anymore? <laughs> 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 that actually is perfect. I was going to give him Pepto Bismol, uh, but I like that pink better. Because, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, like, I don't, I look, I'm happy when I, anyone, I want everyone to have a happy, healthy baby, like, of course. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't know, we're in a different time. I, I can't imagine watching next season of Vanderpump Rules if it's going to be like it always has been. I can't, I, well, because you know what I want to have happen? I want your, uh, your uh, co workers at the time, your, your business, your business partners, I want, just the Tom and Ariana show. The only two people I like on that show. I, I mean, I love them good too. People. Yeah. I could, and I could see them being the only people that actually will like turn 40 gracefully and actually like have heads 
on their shoulders. So that's my wish for the world. I want a Tom, I want a Tom Tom spinoff with a little bubble. A little bit of bubble, not, yeah. not a lot. Yeah. Right. No, I would love that. I think that would be the the only way forward in my eyes is to do like a Tom Tom sort of S spin-off where we can lose a lot of the people and just you know, it has to change. I, I can't the idea of having of watching Jackson Brittany um, in the process of having a baby on Bravo just seems like I can't even compute it. Like that people have been sending me that photo and it's like you know it's like Valerie Cheris like I don't wanna see that. <laughs> Note to <laughs> self <laughs> I like can't I don't wanna see it and I, and I, again I say I want everyone to have a happy, healthy baby, but in terms of like reality T V, I'm not even sure why they fired certain people and not him. Like none That's, of it makes sense to me. It feels very much like they put a band-aid over the bigger issue that that entire show had and those in cast had, which I don't really get. Speaking of the cast, do you think Raquel is doing the DoorDash for Sir Delivery right now? Oh, <laughs> for sure. She is one person that I do need to see Raquel on screen in some capacity somewhere, whether it be like a web series or something. Like I do <laughs> want to see Raquel hob hopping around town on her door. If she is doing DoorDash, I'd like to see that. Like <laughs> The one thing you'd like to say, I feel like she's the one person who was probably sad about Model Land not happening. You know, Raquel came on my show at the very end of last season and oh. she said, she had said she wanted to next season do a pageant on Vanderpump Rules because she was going to sign up for a pageant. And I thought, that's what I need. Like, that's what I want. And now, you know, we're, I don't know if we're going to get that, but that's we're what I would like to see. I would love to see her have full pageant meltdowns and trying to sing, give us a little Candace, even though Candace can sing, uh, that's all she can do, but besides that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you, who's your, do you have a least favorite on Potomac? I'm just hopping there. Is Candace, do, do you like her? Do you not? What's happening? You know, I flip, I, I don't, I flip, my favorite is Karen Huger. She's my favorite. I like worship the ground Karen walks on. Everyone else, you know, I flip a lot on Giselle. Uh, I loved Giselle last season. And then this season, I'm just like not really into her. Robin, the same way, like I go back and every week, I think with Robin, uh, I love her one week and then the next week I'm not into her. But um, but Karen Huger is like my number one right now. I Throwing love it. it. She's my birthday twin. I mean, that is truly, it's me, her, and um, Bing Crosby. So I really feel like that kind of, we're holding a lot of pillars up. All and right. by the way, T'Challa too. I mean, the bird is really stealing the whole show. <laughs> that bird, I'm like, Monique, you're so pretty. You don't need to have a bird. Do you know what I mean? Like, she steals focus enough when she walks in. We don't need the the the, the trials and tribulations of losing T'Challa. And then that Instagram live, I... Uh, Devastating. I, you're I you're right. Like, yeah. You're that, right, though, that Monique is like, she, like, makes me almost uncomfortable by how pretty she is. Like, she's stunning. Um, but I have been watching this season and thinking, like, maybe I need a bird. Like, I've been thinking about... <laughs> <laughs> maybe like right here you're like that like i would just love the energy of you no wi-fi no power just with a parrot in your ear and you're like well this is my home this is <laughs> this is what i'm doing my boyfriend and i would kill each other like we were sitting staring at each other with no air, no power no uh nothing earlier when it all went out and we were just staring at each other and we were like there's nowhere we can even go because it's a pandemic and like everything's closed like what do we do here there's not there's truly nothing besides just wait till morning it's very much like the revenant <laughs> you're like I'll, I'll go in this bear and wait till 8 a.m i guess we'll see right just go in the medicine medicine cabinet and try to find a pill it's like whatever puts me to bed <laughs> very like <laughs> san francisco yeah the whole judy garland that's what the rose for if you and your boyfriend were a couple on bravo which one do you ever relate to one in particular or no um, <laughs> i don't think no i don't think i relate to any of them I mean, good. That's good. I, for I will, I will say I do imagine. I, I do um, work after working with Tom and Ariana. I do get their, um, I get their dynamic a lot. Like they complement each other really well. And I don't know if it always um, comes across on screen on the show, um, but I do think they're very different from each other and and complement. So maybe like in in terms of that, I think him and I, my boyfriend, are very different. Um, that okay, I like that. That works. And I'm sure the show edits out a lot of their stuff because it used to favor one person who's no longer on the show, so. By the way, what if I just said like, uh, Dorinda and John or something? <laughs> you're like, the thing about my boyfriend, yeah. And you're like, what? And you're like, that's love, that's a man, that's a woman. When a man loves a woman. <laughs> Did you ever see that? Did you ever see When a Man Loves a Woman with Meg Ryan? 
It's like yes. so good, but it's also so crazy. Like the, there's that scene where she's like wasted throwing eggs at the car in the middle of the night. <laughs> I like to feel like I got my MS, my master's of science in MR Meg Ryan. Like that's just, I've never watched Breaking Bad, but I love her in everything she does. Me too. God bless Me her. Too. Uh, a final little game I want to play because I don't want to keep you for eight hours after your stressful day, because I know you because I know you love fall. I have a little game called Fall Sense or Nonsense. So okay. we wrote up some random uh, flavors of candles, and I want you to guess if they're real or fake from a Bath and Body Works or something like that. The first one is sugary apple pie crust. Uh, yes. Wait, do, wait. I have a question. Do they have to be uh, Bath and Body scents? They can. They can be Etsy. They can be okay. your favorite, like like a doula you have down the street that you get candles from. I won't ask questions. Because Danny, I just want to say that I was in Target recently and like their name of their fall scents are very different than Bath and Body. Like Bath and Body has like sweater weather, gather, you know, like they have pretty traditional or, or pumpkin, uh, pumpkin waffles or something. But Target gets real creative and they're just throwing words together. It's like, you know, insidious pumpkin or so, I don't know they're they're getting real creative with the titles there. Target is like the only fans of candles there's like icing cream pumpkin crust and you're like <laughs> okay you're like I'll click for more I guess yeah 5.99 right. why not and right. I bought a I bought a couple of their fall candles and I do not recommend it like they don't have a good scent like they're not a strong enough I need something like very pungent or not not pungent that's the wrong word something very strong uh, like it it, it bodies the scent. Like it, you walk in and you wafe into it, like type of thing. You want to be in an oven, basically, like a little yeah, cozy pad. Yeah. Bath and Body has a stronger scent. There's also um, um, Wax Cabin is a company I really like. They're like a smaller. They do soy candles that are really great. Um, that are more environmentally friendly, and they have a pumpkin one. Forgive me, I don't know what it's called, but it's um, Wax Wax Cabin Company. I like that. All these things are like very horror movie but i'm into it like gather wax cabin <laughs> model land i'm kind of scared but excited <laughs> Heir heirloom pumpkin when you said heirloom i was like how is that a pumpkin <laughs> this is my natural state right here just like <laughs> well thank god you have all the candles for your next power habits which i'm sure will happen right. shortly oh um, danny we're loaded i have like a whole closet when you open it it just candles fall out Wait, I like this game more. Um, what is your, if you could recommend two false scents that everybody needs? I love, I, this is really great heirloom pumpkin, but I like Bath and Body, any of their pumpkin. I used to love the latte flavor that Bath and Body had. Mm -hmm. Now you can only find it on like eBay, which is a weird thing. Um, That's pumpkin a dark corner of the internet. <laughs> I've done it before. I've You're in ordered big boards for a candle. <laughs> the Bath and Body latte, I've literally ordered off eBay because they stopped making it. Um, but I love uh, the pumpkin pecan waffle at Bath and Body is really good. Or again, I, I want to mention Wax. I hope I'm saying that name right. It's Wax think, Cabin. Okay. Because th they have one of my favorite scents, and they also do. Oh, they also do a, a Christmas one that I love. And Nest. Nest makes really good Christmas candles. I love mm -hmm. Nest. Nest also makes me feel so fancy in my life. I'm kind of like, oh, I'm in a Nest stage. That's kind of what I I want to attribute to. Right. If I could afford all Nest all the time, like I would probably only buy Nest because they're they're just the best. And um, they're, I think they have pumpkin chai latte as their uh, pumpkin one. And then their Christmas one, they have the holiday pack, which it's so, when I'm decorating my tree, I, I pull out that Nest holiday scent. It's like the best. Uh, um, and also, so what, when do you start decorating? How early is too early? Like, I like it. I like it to be decorated before Thanksgiving. <laughs> I love that. I love that because savor it, waste not, want not. Yeah. I want it. To, I want to be cooking Thanksgiving dinner and have my tree up. Oh, that's, I like that. It's very, you're kind of just like mad menning yourself. I'm into it. Yeah. But this year, Danny, there's no rules. Like you can do it whenever you want. <laughs> so it's like, it, it doesn't matter. It's spray off your tree and hope for the best and like truly will muddle through somehow. And with that, I mean, I'm going to start decorating my entire tree my entire life. I want to, Thank you so much for hopping on with me. Thank you. Just like your most stressful, the most, I'm like, I would have cried and quit so many times. So shout out to you and everyone. I mean, everyone is saying that they loved everything iconic. I don't know if you were seeing the comments. You have the best fans. Oh, thank the best, you. Thank the you. The best aura. 
Thank you so much, Danny. Well, Danny, when you're um, when everything is done, hopefully I'll get to see you here in uh, Los Angeles or when I'm over there. And and we I can, love that. Well, now we, I need to. We go can go pumpkin. candle shopping. We'll yeah, go we candle have to go shopping. candle shopping and to the pumpkin patch because I want to see Christina Aguilera. Yes. I'll settle for BB Rexa though. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Right. Thank you, Danny. Bye, Danny. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Talk to you soon. And bye, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be on next week. I mean, of course. And a uh, little spoiler, a little fun. Ben from Watch What uh, Crappens will be on next week. Yes, I did just steal the entire last week lineup from uh, Watch What Happens Live. We're doing it all. Love you all. Cheers. I'm going to finish. I'm going to have another tequila because Teddy's gone. Good riddance. Bye.